this video is the second portion of how to play guitar chords from the free ebook for beginning guitar players. So this video is going to demonstrate how to build all the bigger chords. And just so you know, the chords that I chose to put in the ebook, they are not in any specific key. They are common chords. And this way you just have a good idea of what a lot of the popular big open chords are and even bar chord shapes as well. So uh, basically I chose just going A, B, C, D, E, F, G for the root notes and did major and minor chords starting on each of those root notes. Now there are oh, so many more chords, probably hundreds of different chords beyond this and as far as different ways to hold the chords I really don't think there's any actual number on how many chords shapes you can actually play. Uh, you may see books that say uh, like you know learn over a thousand different chord shapes like thousands of different chords in this one and they still don't cover every single kind of chord. I, I don't think any book ever will. Uh, that's just how expansive music really can be. So, let's go ahead and get into it. The first chord is an A major. So, building from the bottom up, we have open A, first finger on second fret of the D string, middle finger, second fret of the G string, ring finger, second fret of the B string, and high open E. A minor is next. To build the A minor chord, we're going to hit the open A first, middle finger, second fret, D string, ring finger, second fret, G string, then first finger, first fret, B string, and then high open E. So we got zero, two, two, one, zero. Next chord, we have a B major. It sounds like this. And actually, what I'm doing is barring with my index finger. Not index finger, that's the index finger. <laughs> barring with my ring finger. Uh, and it is crooked or at an angle, so I'm not putting it dead straight on. You could do that, but I feel more comfortable just doing it this way and it gets the job done. So, what I'm doing, first finger, second fret of the A string, and then my ring finger lays across the D, G, and B string, all on the fourth fret. So we got two, four, four, four. B minor now. So the B minor chord I am laying my index finger across five strings, starting on the A string. So we got it, the second fret on the A, D, G, B, and E strings. And then, it's basically like we're making a power chord. We're doing like a B5 chord. <clears throat> and then we're adding this middle finger down on the third fret of the B string while the index finger lays across all five. So this way, when we, when we build it from the bottom up, we have two, four, four, three, two. So second fret A string, fourth fret D string, fourth fret G string, third fret B string, second fret high E. Now this might be difficult for beginners because of how much strength is needed in order to make a bar chord sound proper. So if you need to, pick one string at a time, make sure everything sounds good. A lot of times if like this top note here on the high E string isn't ringing out, it's because you're not doing enough pressure. So use your thumb behind your hand to push into the neck to help with that. You can also actually pull on your back muscle a little bit, so like you're actually trying to pull something this way, that can also help. So it's like kind of a pull backwards and squeeze with the thumb at the same time. 
that can actually uh, help give you more power on the bar. Uh, also, the annotation up now will take you to a video that helps you develop bar chords in a nice gradual step-by-step -step process. So, moving on to the C major chord. So, we have third finger, third fret on the A string, second finger, second fret on the D string, open G, first finger, first fret on the B string, high open E. So we got three, two, zero, one, zero. <clears throat> Next is a C minor chord. So what we're going to do is take what you just did for the B minor shape, and we're going to slide it up one fret and play it on the third. That makes it a C minor chord. So this shape, anywhere you move it, produces a minor chord. So as long as you start this shape, starting on the A string, those are all minor chords. So the C minor chord, you'll be barring <clears throat> on the third frets. So we have your first finger will be on uh, fret three, then your ring, fifth fret D string, pinky, fifth fret G string, middle finger on the fourth fret of the B string, and then you get your index finger on the third fret of the high E. Next chord, D major. So now, we have four strings being played. We're gonna start with the open D string, then first finger on the second fret of the G string, third finger on the third fret of the B string, middle finger, second fret of the high E string. So we have zero, two, three, two. D minor is going to have open D again. Middle finger, second fret of the G string, ring finger, third fret on the B string, index finger on the first fret of the high E string. So we have zero, two, three, one. Next, <clears throat> we have E major. So we have the open E to start with, middle finger, second fret on the A string, ring finger, second fret on the D string, first finger, first fret on the G string, and we have open B, open high E. So that is an E major. Remember the A minor <clears throat> uses the exact same fingers. It's just starting on a string higher. So if you start this chord shape Let's say your middle finger is starting on the D string, that's playing an A minor. If you move it down a string and your middle finger is starting this shape on the A string, that's an E major. So you could do a progression where you're just going back and forth between those. So uh, back to the chords. So we just did the E major. So for the E minor, all we have to do at this point is take the index finger and remove it. That's it. That's an E minor chord. So this will give us zero, two, two, zero, zero, zero. Next is a very challenging chord for, I'd say, every beginner I've ever taught mainly because of how much strength is involved with playing good old F major six string bar chord. This is the chord. And the reason why it's so difficult, like barring all the way down on the first fret across all six strings requires a bit of muscle. So when we did the B minor shape, and the C ma uh, minor shape is actually going to be the same sh looking shape with your fingers. It's just instead of starting on the A string for the root note, we're going to start on the low E. So we take this shape, move everything down a string, 
and then we have the F major. So again, you can use your thumb to push in behind the neck to help give some extra strength there. You can pull this way on the guitar, and you're gonna have to make sure you use your opposite arm to hold on to the body of the guitar there. to get that F major chord. So it is a challenge, absolutely a challenge, but if you stick with it, you will develop the strength to do it. <clears throat> so a lot of people, they're gonna, you're gonna feel a lot of stress right in here, where the, that's like basically your main muscle for your thumb to be pushing in like this. So, and that's okay. Uh, th this is a growing pain that will happen for almost everybody when learning to play, especially bar chords. And that's okay. You know, if it gets too painful, stop, shake it out, give yourself a break. But, you know, you, you, you will most likely experience some pain when you're doing this because you're going to be building uh, strength in your muscles. And you can't build muscle without pain. That's just how it happens. Uh, so it was a good pain, though. It's a good pain. You might you might grow to like it, just like, I, like I'd have. So anyway, so yeah, keep that thumb behind the neck there. Uh, you're going to have your index finger going across all six strings. So if you need to, you can just practice doing that. So again, if you need help with the barks, uh, you can click the, the annotation up again. It's taking you to the same video for working on bar chords and just easily, prog uh, easily progressing into doing more difficult barring. So anyway. So you got your index finger across all six strings, and then you got your ring finger added to the third fret of the A string, the pinky third fret of the D string, middle finger second fret of the G string. So we have one, three, three, two, one, one. And then going into the F minor, all we have to do is lift the middle finger up. So this way we have one, three, three, one, one, one. F major, F minor, major, minor. It's the same thing like going between the E major and the E minor. It's actually the same chord shape. So if you actually pretend like your, your finger is holding something here behind the nut, that's the same shape. There's your E uh, major. Slide it up a fret so you're barring the one. Whoop. There we go. Then you got the F major. So this is also a movable shape. Anywhere you start this shape is a major chord. When you start it on the low E string, you take your middle finger off. That is a um, no, uh, minor chord anywhere you start. Just like we did with the minor chord starting on the A string. Uh, also, we did the B major like this, where we had the ring finger barring. Anywhere you move that shape is also going to be a major chord. Okay, now last two chords. We have a G major. So this one, you're going to have your middle finger, third fret of the low E. Then first finger, second fret on the A string, open D, open G, and then ring finger, third fret of the B string, and then pinky on the third fret of the high E string. So we have three, two, zero, zero, three, three. Some of you may have tried learning chords before and you might see a G chord to where you have an open B string and then you're still holding the G note on the high E string. So that would be three, two, zero, 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 three. That is also a popular open G chord. Both are G major chords. Now, the last one, G minor. So remember, we did that F minor bar chord. That's the same shape, same fingers, just starting it on the third fret. So you got your index finger across all six strings on the third fret. And then you got your ring finger, fifth fret on the A string, pinky on the fifth fret of the 
D string, and then the rest are threes. So three, five, five, three, three, three. Now that you've learned how to construct those chords, I'm going to demonstrate four chord progressions using some of those chords. And these chord progressions do occur in uh, keys. And I'll tell you which ones they are as we go. So here's the first progression. So this one is in the key of C or key of A minor. Same key. So we're going to use A minor chord, C major, G major, D minor. So each chord will be strummed three times and after strumming the third one that'll give you time to move to the next chord. If you do get comfortable with this you are more than welcome to strum the chord four times while trying to switch to the next chord without pausing. But because this is designed for beginners, I think it's important to have that extra time in between changing chords. So that's why we're doing just three, three strums instead of four. All right, here we go. We have A minor, C, G, D minor, repeat. Something to keep in mind while doing this to make the chord changes easier. You have anchor fingers and the anchor fingers are fingers that stay on the same frets as you change from one chord to the next. So going from the A minor into the C chord, your first and second finger are your anchor fingers. They don't have to move in order to go to the C chord. So all you need to do is take your ring finger off and put it on the A string. So you can go in between those two. So that's good practice there as well. Practice going between the A minor and the C chord by keeping your index and middle finger down and just move your ring finger from the D string to the A string. Now the G chord into the D minor is an anchor finger, your ring finger will stay put. So going into the D minor chord from G, take everything off but the ring finger, and then you got the D minor chord. So that's another good one to practice. Go between the D minor and the G while keeping your ring finger planted on the third fret of the B string. This next progression is in the key of G or E minor, same key. So now we're going to use E minor, C, G, and D. It's actually a very popular chord progression used in a lot of music. So here we go. E minor, C, G, D, repeat. Now you have some anchoring in this chord progression as well. Going between the G major and the D, you have the same anchor finger as going from the G to the D minor. The ring finger will stay on the third fret of the B string. So the ring finger does not move. So that's another good one to practice. Going between the G chord and the D chord while keeping your ring finger on the third fret of the B string. This progression will prove to be a challenge for most people because we're going to use good old F chord, the big bar. Now this uh, chord progression is also in the key of C or the key of A minor, same key. And here we go. 
C, G, A minor, F. Repeat. That progression is also heavily used in music. Very popular one. The last chord progression demonstrated is in the key of F or D minor. Same key. And we're going to have two six string bar chords in this one. So this will definitely build strength in your hand once you get this down. So here we go. So we're going to use the chords G minor, F major, a minor, D minor. Here we go. G minor, F, A minor, D minor. Repeat. So that progression and the previous one really don't have any anchor fingers, so they will be challenging for uh, new guitar players, but that's okay, because think about how much better you're going to be once you get those down. If you have any questions about the chords in this video, or the progressions, or anything pertaining to music, please send me an email. I'm more than happy to help, and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>